Buenos días, me llamo Mark Chaffardini y uh, estoy aquí con uh, Nacho Vigalando. Uh, buenos días, señor Vigalando. Buenos días, caballero. Uh, bienvenido a Fantastic Fest. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was great. That was oh, great. That was perfect. Thank you. There's, there's yeah. no head shaking? Okay. No, no, no head shaking. No, okay, no. Can I be in your next movie? Yeah, um, um, but, but you don't need to speak Spanish to be in my next movie. Because um, you are invading, your culture is invading ours. So, okay. uh, uh, yeah, I have to make movies in, in English, so don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. So, okay. yes, be there, be there. So, yes, so that's a yes. That's a yes. We'll that's a yes. Yes, right. signet. Uh, just walked out of Colossal, and I like that you know, you get to talk to the filmmaker directly after coming off of the high of the film. Colossal mm -hmm. was incredible. And don't I'm, think you think. And I'm, I'm wondering um, if I'm allowed to curse for this. Is the subtext of the film, is it colossal fuck-ups? Because these people have some really big problems. So, yeah, the movie is, uh, yeah, th that's an obvious thing uh, that I made. It's not a, it's clearly when you see the title colossal and the um, the, the letters are kind of small, uh, that's a statement about how this movie is about really small problems from a colossal perspective or uh -huh. uh, or colossal problems uh, with a really small focus on these people gotcha. so um, I, I yeah I wanted to play this that kind of I don't know if I should say ironic but because I hate irony <laughs> but uh, the movie is all the time playing this kind of um, game about the scale of the problems compared to the scale of the problems gotcha. so yeah it's like it's like the movie pretends to be small and big at the same time, mm -hmm. which is something that is really funny. Uh, when I was making a film, some days I was going home, going to the hotel and just having the feeling that I'm making another really small contained film. And all the days I was coming home and I was like, what, what, what I'm making a blockbuster. What, <laughs> what the hell is this? It's like, it's like I'm, a, I'm actually making a movie in which um, um, we have three guys uh, having the long conversation, like a three-minute conversation around the table, and later we have two hundred extras running, <laughs> running through the streets. Uh -huh. uh, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Uh, um, that's the thing that I like the most about the film: the fact that the, the the size of the film is so crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you know that's the thing that I like about your films is it. You may know what you're getting into, but being a Nacho Vigalondo movie, you don't know what to expect. You never see the next step coming, and it keeps you wanting to get to the end. Oh, and there, you make crowd-pleasing movies, and I think that this, maybe just because of the scale and the shift, I mean, you've done time travel, you've done aliens, you've mm -hmm. done, um, what would you call open windows? Psychopaths? Serial killer? The way I, I, the way I describe open, open windows to myself is like, it's a techno giallo. Okay. Because all the, all the, all the, um, the best and the worst of that film is kind of similar to the merits and the faults of the yellow films. Okay. Somehow, it's, it's, it's partially intentional, uh, partially accidental. Mm -hmm. But for me, uh, Open Windows is um, is a techno response to the uh, this, the Italian slashers, gotcha. which have this kind of yellow, so not supernatural, but uh, guys with a knife, mm -hmm. um, damsel in distress. Um, this kind of strange hero in the middle. Mm -hmm. Well, the interesting thing about Colossals, it seems like your, your shorts have a lot of dense material in two, three minutes. Did this start small and then just became a feature, or how did this, how did this manifest? One of my favorite authors, one of my authors, the one that will be guiding me through all my life, was Philip K. Dick, the, the novelist, okay. the writer. And he said something once that um, I read something that. Um, that has been haunting me forever. Uh, he told that a short story is about the uh, the device. It's about the, it's, it's about an idea, uh -huh. but uh, a novel is about the characters. So uh, a short story is driven by the uh, I don't know the um, the I don't know clever or stupid idea that you can have like uh, in the morning and you can write in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. But a feature film, even if the idea feels like a short film, is a, if a feature film makes, makes sense, it's because of how the uh, emotional arc of the characters uh, develops in front of your eyes. Mm -hmm. So even if uh, you can make a short film out of the premise, okay. but if the movie is 110 minutes long 
is because of what happens with uh, the female and the male character and how their, um, their roles cross mm -hmm. uh, at some point and how uh, their, their, their lives are affected by the other. Gotcha. So that's what the story is actually about. Okay. Well, you know, being the writer and director, I have a question for you based on what you said about Philip K. Dick. There's a line in the movie where uh, Jason Sudeikis is talking to Tim Blake Nelson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, if the trick is good, fuck the story. Yeah. So was that purposely put in because of that? Yeah, I want, to, I want the movie to be able to comment on, on itself uh, more as an easter egg. I'm happy that you... you you got it, but uh, I don't. I don't want to be openly meta in a film. I just want okay. to. I don't know. I want to. I want the movie to be able to reflect on on itself at okay. some point. And for example, the um, the fact that one of the set pieces in the movie is about fireworks um, is um, also a commentary on tweaks. Um, uh -huh. and, um, in Spain, we have an expression when we. Uh, when we talk about uh, lame uh, visual effects in a film, when we talk about movies that are about all VFX and no substance, mm -hmm. uh, in Spain we uh, talk about um, fireworks. It's like okay. it's always just fireworks and nothing else. Uh -huh. So I wanted to play something that you don't need to understand in order to um, get the point of the film. Gotcha. But I want to introduce those, those themes in a in a subtle way. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's funny. Uh, you, have, you don't have to take it seriously, but I appreciate that you found some kind of reflection. Well, it, it was really great, and you know, it's, going back to what I said about not expecting, it went from humor to horror to drama, and a lot of what did that beyond the writing are uh, similar elements that you don't expect. I mean, mm -hmm. Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis. Yeah, that was, yeah, 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 like, yeah. So what you know, what made them write, and who were you looking for? Uh, for if roles? you like the film, you have to thank a lot to uh, Anne Hathaway because. Okay. Um, I wrote the script. I gave it to my agents. I was open. I was ready to make the movie with a with a small cast mm -hmm. and a small budget, um, and make another indie film with a, I don't know with a, with a funny shape or anything like that. But suddenly, uh, Anne Hathaway came, um, and she told me that she wanted to play the role, and everything changed. Um, mm -hmm. That changed the, the game totally. Uh, Colossal stopped being another indie film from this weirdo from Spain, and it became the next Anne Hathaway film. Okay. Not uh, not the next Anne Hathaway film, but the next Anne Hathaway film. I mean, she. Sure, yeah. Um, and I, I I will I don't know how my, I, I don't know how old uh, I'll die, but uh, I won't be able to thank her <laughs> enough for building this movie. Mm -hmm. um, um, through her own presence. Gotcha. Um, yeah, and once Anne Hathaway was there, um, later we were, we were able to build the rest of the casting. Jason Sudeikis was really supportive from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and especially those two guys, Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis, became like, like a dream came true because they are not only big stars, they are not only amazing actors, they are also their names uh, resonate in a way that plays a part in the game that the movie is playing with the audience. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, when you watch about, uh, when you hear about the movie with uh, Jason Sudeikis and Hathaway, a romantic comedy comes to your mind. A love triangle comes to your mind. Mm -hmm. And so you figure uh, the kind of movie that this movie is trying to punch in the face. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, so it, it's amazing. I couldn't, I couldn't have a, imagine a, a better casting for this. Uh -huh. um, they were the first choices. I mean, they, they were the first who came to us. And After reading the script, or did they just say, hey, they are not just making a movie I want? It. They read the script, and okay. they wanted to, to know about me, and they saw some of my stuff. Um, so they were the, fir the first offers. Okay. Um, so it's not my talent. It's not my uh, it's not my skills trying to make a really big casting. They were the mm -hmm. first ones. So um, I wish I was able to tell you a heroic story about how I managed to bring these people together, mm -hmm. but that that wouldn't be that wouldn't be the truth. Okay, uh, and that's truth. what you are. You're honest. The truth okay. is, uh, they came here and I felt kind of stupid because um, you want to feel like you discuss the choices, mm -hmm. the options. Gotcha. So you wanna you wanna feel like. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, let's wait for any other names. 
oh, you listen to Sudeikis, okay, well, what, which are the other options? That wasn't the, that, that wasn't the case, it was like, okay, Hathaway, perfect, <laughs> listen to Sudeikis, amazing. So I felt like a really stupid guy saying uh-huh. yes to everything gotcha. at some point. Yeah. <laughs> well, talk to me about the creatures. Um, you have the robot, you have the, and Hathaway is the creature. Um, I hate to bring up a parallel to something like Pacific Rim, but yeah. did that help? Did you have to push this back because maybe that was getting you know, still in people's minds? Uh, no, not at all. No, no, no. I, I think I really like Game Montoro and I really enjoy Pacific uh-huh. Rim. And, uh, and I feel like this movie can, uh, I don't know, this movie uh, gets the benefit from the fact that the movie that Pacific Rim really is out there. Uh-huh. I mean, uh, for a lot of people, this kind of... Uh, Genre is alive and fresh because of a movie about giant robots fighting with giant monsters. Uh-huh. So, because the movie is not following that path, but m- making something out of it. Gotcha. Uh, I really love that we have a, the reference of fresh. Well, you've done, as I've said before, you've done so much. Where do you want to go? Do you want to try crazier? Do you want to try scarier, more straight lines? You mean the future? Yeah, in the future. I, I, I have no idea because every time that I try to, I don't know, to fathom my path uh, uh-huh. in, 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 a, in, a, in a close future, I fail all the time. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm open to do something that could be darker, more serious at some point. Um, I don't know, probably I have a meeting with these exciting guys tomorrow and they pitch me a project and it's uh, the total opposite of what I'm expecting to do <laughs> and I don't know, you never know. Okay. I, I'm not this kind of powerful filmmaker who can uh, draw the uh, the next 10 years of, of his life and I have no idea what's going to happen. Well, films are all gambles anyway, so there's no way you could chart something like that even if you wanted to, correct? Yeah, it's impossible, it's impossible. Um, and there's always the fear of not making more films. That is, that's always there. Yeah. People who are more successful than me, sometimes they stop making films because things go wrong sure. in a way or another. So I'm just alert and just thankful for being able to reach this point. So yeah, yeah. That's, so yeah, I, I don't feel like, um, I don't feel like, um, I don't feel like I'm, like I'm driving this really safe highway. I'm just to waiting for things to happen in a nice way. Okay. Yeah. Well, the one thing I do want to comment on, um, aside from my love of your work, I couldn't help but notice there was a lot of Pabst Blue Ribbon in this movie. Do you like the beer? Did no. they give you a nice paycheck to put That's it in there? That's a nice accident. Um, <laughs> uh, I like the way the um, the bottle works on screen. Okay. Um. um the water, the sticker, I think it works on screen. Uh, I'm pretty sure the art department had had a deal with uh, with um, with um, with the with the brand. It's not that the brand is giving us money; is that they're not going to take us to jail if we show the bottles <laughs> on screen. They're going to sue us. So that's the thing. I'm pretty sure that's that's the case. Okay, Nacho, it's been an absolute pleasure. Hope Thank you enjoy the rest of your time at your fest. And yeah. I think Tim Alamo said it the best, or Tim uh, Tim Lee, you are the unofficial mascot of this festival. That's that's um, that's really a, a flutter. It's really flattering. <laughs> um, yeah, and you got the tattoo, right? I have two tattoos coming here, and I hope uh, this year I have a third one. Okay, oh, really? yeah, yeah, excellent. It's funny. It's funny the, the thing about the mascot because you're not. You're not like a like a figure. You're not like a, like the prince. You're mm-hmm. not like like with a cape, uh, like I don't know, flying over the people. You're just the crazy guy <laughs> in that corner, drinking too much and screaming out loud. And yeah, we wouldn't really. want anybody else but you to fill that role. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Para oh, un placer. Un placer. Muchas gracias. <laughs>